physics of a trailer weight distribution system are surprisingly interesting, with, at least to me, some very unexpected results. We start by looking at a trailer with the maximum rated weight for my truck. Typically, a target of 12% of this weight is applied to the trailer tongue, or in this case, 996 pounds. In order to achieve this weight distribution, we need to locate the combined center of mass for the trailer and load at 12.3 feet from the trailer ball. We calculate this from the principle that the sum of moments about any point equals zero for objects at rest, leading to this simple formula. A moment, also known as torque, can be visualized as a rotational force. For example, a torque wrench provides a specified moment at a bolt and is equal to the force applied times the distance from the bolt to the force location. Hitch weight distribution systems all work by providing a moment at the ball connecting the trailer to the tow vehicle. We can include consideration for these moments to the sum of moments equation and then calculate what is required at the weight distribution hitch for a given tongue vertical weight. In this example, we set F at V to 496 pounds, 500 pounds less than the original 996, and calculate the required M to be 7,000 foot-pounds. Note that the trailer axle weight has increased by 500 pounds, the same value that the tongue weight has decreased. The key issue here is that the change in vertical weight on the trailer hitch is related not only to the moment applied at the trailer hitch from the weight distribution system, but it is also a function of the distance from the trailer axles to the hitch ball. For example, a trailer twice as long, say 28 feet to the axles, would have a tongue weight of 746 pounds, while a very short trailer with 7 feet to the wheels would have zero tongue weight with the same 7,000 foot-pound torque applied with the weight distribution hitch. While this may now appear obvious, I completely missed the relationship prior to doing these calculations. Now to have a look at the truck. We place scales under each truck axle, install the hitch receiver, tear the scales, then bring the trailer to the truck. A third scale is located under the tandem trailer axles and teared. As the tongue is lowered onto the truck, we can easily read the change in load on the truck front and rear axle. Trailer axle load is unchanged. It is also possible to calculate delta truck axle weights if we didn't have scales installed. This is done by using the principle that the sum of moments about any point are zero, here we use the truck hitch location, and the sum of vertical forces equals zero. This gives two equations with two, with two unknowns. Solving, we calculate F2 equals 1,367 pounds and F1 a minus 371 pounds. Comparing these values to the scale readings, we see that our calculations are correct. Taking the example trailer loading with F sub V equals 496 pounds and N equals 7,000 foot-pounds permits calculating the new front axle load of 395 pounds, rear axle load 101 pounds, and trailer 500 pounds. Once again, this agrees perfectly with our scales. Recall F sub V and M are not independent variables. They are related to each other as shown in the trailer example and must be used as a set. We can repeat these calculations for a range of moments or weight distribution system settings and arrive at this table. The top line is the situation without any tension on the weight distribution system. The second highlighted line is the example we have looked at. Graphing these results show the front and rear truck axle weights versus the applied vertical load at the truck ball. We can pick out our no weight transfer axle weights and previous example axle loads on this plot. It is perhaps a bit easier to visualize the same information by changing the x-axis to applied moment. The obvious question is where in this plot is the optimal loading condition? Ford recommends setting tension of the weight distribution system so that the resting position of the body above the front axle is halfway between the position with no trailer attached and the position with the trailer attached and no weight distribution applied. 
Recall the front axle load with no weight distribution applied was minus 371 pounds. Assuming movement is proportional to load applied suggests the ideal delta front axle weight would be minus 186 pounds. This occurs with a moment of 1696 foot-pounds applied. We can also see this on the plot of axle loads. There are some unexpected, or at least to me, unexpected observations. Hitch ball vertical weight is dependent on the trailer length for a given moment setting. An infinitely long trailer would transfer zero vertical load at the trailer hitch, but would shift an equal and opposite load from the rear to front truck axle. In my truck example, vertical load at the trailer hitch is only reduced from 1367 pounds to 1060 pounds, or a 22% reduction, while the front axle weight change is a factor of two. Looking at our calculated optimal loading, we now have 121 pounds transferred from the tongue to the trailer wheels, a net loss of 186 pounds on the truck front axle, and a 1,060 pound gain on the rear axle from trailer loading. I hope you gained something useful from this and would love to hear any comments. Thanks for watching.